It's been another great year for TV. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best TV shows of 2019. Terry, look out! <laughs> Okay, I know that was bad, but let's not jump to any conclusions about whose fault it was. <laughs> that means we're looking at the most critically acclaimed TV shows of 2019. We'll be including new shows and miniseries, as well as new seasons of returning shows. However, because we're looking at the 2019 seasons of these shows, spoiler alert, but Game of Thrones will not be on this list. Sorry, but that season's just not sitting well. Anyway, let's get to the list. What about everyone else? All the other people who think they know what's good. They don't get to choose. Number 10, Mindhunter Season 2. Immortal and life size. After what seemed like forever, Mindhunter finally returned to Netflix in August. This season primarily focused on the infamous Atlanta murders that occurred between 1979 and 1981, involving the deaths of at least 28 people. While season two changed the formula by focusing on one specific case rather than on various serial killers, it still included some memorable interviews, such as with David Berkowitz and Charles Manson. But no matter what they say, you maintain the same story. Because my truth is simple, and your truth's complicated. Upping the personal stakes of its leads, and diving ever deeper into the morbidly fascinating psychology of its villains, Mindhunter remained a well-crafted and highly entertaining true crime series. So you're talking to other people? A few, but no one who's done what you did. Number nine, Succession season two. Bore on the floor, bore on the floor. Kendall, ring the troops. It's been a good year for HBO. From August to October, the network aired the second season of their acclaimed comedy Succession, following a power-hungry family who owns a media empire. While the first season was certainly good, the second elevated it into the realm of premium television. Would Rhea really be the worst thing in the world? Or does a woman from outside actually make sense right now? <sighs> okay, right, well, she, she got to you. Season two explored the characters on a much deeper level, was plotted in a much tighter and more extravagant manner, and contained some biting topical satire. Above all, it was refreshing, entertaining, and oftentimes very, very funny. Imagine if Shakespeare wrote King Lear as a dark comedy, and you have the essence of succession. Well, that was exciting. <laughs> Smuggled in like Cleopatra in the carpet. Yeah, sorry for the cloak and dagger. Rhea Jarrell, and you must be Oedipus Roy. Number eight, I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson, season one. What do we think it should look like? Sleek. Good. High tech. Ow. Aerodynamic. Too small. I'm sorry? Too small. Sketch comedy is extremely difficult to pull off, but Tim Robinson makes it look effortless. Of course, Robinson has some experience, having previously starred in and written for Saturday Night Live. Netflix saw his potential and offered him his own sketch show. And the result was one of the funniest and most outlandish shows of 2019. You called me a dum-dum and she called me an idiot, so. Yeah, when you post a pic of yourself where you look really cute, then you have to say something a little self-deprecating so it doesn't look like you're just bragging. Oh, okay, got it. Each sketch is brought to extreme and often ridiculous lengths and features a range of talented performers, including Andy Samberg and Will Forte. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you mockingbird. The show has a crazy and infectious energy, and it's just something you need to experience to believe. Uh, any other ideas? Stinky! Number seven, When They See Us. I just came to look after Yusef. Yusef is not here. You are alone with this, in here. Netflix knocked it out of the park yet again with When They See Us a powerful miniseries about the infamous Central Park jogger case. Unlike a lot of true crime stories, this story is told in a very respectful and thoughtful manner, offering timely ruminations on justice, racism, and the American penal system. I'm walking through this with you. You cry, I cry. You mad, I'm mad. You scared, I'm scared. You free, I'm free. It makes for some incredibly difficult and challenging viewing, but the story is told with tender care and exceptional craft, complete with an Emmy-winning performance from Jarell Jerome. 
It also makes a fantastic decision in focusing on each member and their individual stories rather than grouping them together as something like a news article or documentary may have done. It is required viewing for 2019. Number 6. Stranger Things Season 3 I dump your ass. After a significant break, Stranger Things was back in the summer of 2019. The third season embodied a ton of new influences, including the body horror and creature features of the 80s, mall rats, and Soviet-era espionage films like Red Dawn. You wouldn't do that. Why is that? Because you're a policeman. Policemen have rules. The Starcourt Mall made for a vibrant and nostalgic setting, the season introduced beloved characters like Alexi and Robin, and the finale had the internet abuzz with new theories and predictions. Sure, the formula is a little familiar by now, but when it's this darned entertaining, we really don't mind too much. He's here. <sighs> Number 5. Watchmen Season 1 I'll Take a look. Can I take a look at your face? What did you just say to me? HBO's Watchmen serves as a loose sequel to the comic, telling a new story that takes place 34 years later. This allows the show to inhabit its own identity while still retaining the core elements that made Alan Moore's comic series so popular. In the capable hands of showrunner Damon Lindelof, the show manages to be many things at once a rich character study, a topical rumination on race relations and justice, and an exciting superhero story. It's also stylish, gorgeously shot and scored, and filled with remarkable performances, especially from lead Regina King. In other words, Watchmen has both style and substance, making it one of the most intriguing viewing experiences of 2019. What are you two talking about that's taken so long? Oh, nothing. Just the end of the world. Number 4. Russian Doll Season 1 the last six months of my life have been an onslaught of personal failure and uh, other people's misery. Can I find a way? Sorry. Take Groundhog Day, replace Bill Murray with Natasha Lyonne, and move it all to New York City and you have the basic premise of Russian Doll. But the show is so much more than a retread of familiar material. Inventive, witty, and often poignant, Russian Doll is a high concept emotional roller coaster brought to life by stellar performances from Leon and co star Charlie Barnett. Shalom, shalom. Let's move it. This is a place of worship. This means something to me. I was raised Catholic. As in Groundhog Day, Leon's character Nadia has some fun with her predicament, but she must also come to terms with what's trapping her in the time loop. Created by Leon, Leslie Headland, and Amy Poehler, Russian Doll manages to be both hilarious and deeply personal, providing rich thematic material to ponder and discuss. That I'm questioning my own sanity, uh, and that I may be dead. Number three, Chernobyl. What just happened? I don't know. Life can be not only stranger than fiction, but also much more horrifying. HBO drove this point home with Chernobyl, a five-episode miniseries about the Chernobyl disaster of 1986. Don't worry, we did everything right. Something, something strange has happened to you, taste It may forever remain the quintessential Chernobyl story, portraying the events in a hauntingly realistic and morose manner. I want you to tell me everything that happened on the night of the accident. The production values are outstanding, allowing the show to capture the magnitude of the disaster. It's also extraordinarily acted, and features some unbelievable makeup work that grotesquely conveys what Chernobyl's victims endured. It's certainly not easy viewing, but it is compelling and magnificently made. What are you doing? We have to shut all the way down. No. Well, we could be in a xenon pit. We have to shut down by 24 hours. No, we're doing the test tonight. Raise power to 700. Number two, Fleabag season two. Don't play with that. Created by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who also stars as the titular Fleabag, this comedy drama follows an angry, self-destructive woman in London as she struggles to get by. Her misadventures are punctuated by frequent commentary breaking the fourth wall. We lost a week. What was that? What? Where'd you, where'd you just go? However, the show is so much more rewarding than a plot summary can possibly suggest. Waller-Bridge is an incredible talent, 
both writing and performing with heart, humor, and refreshing authenticity. Oh god, I fancy a priest. The show's second season was rightfully showered with praise and awards, including the Emmy for Outstanding Comedy Series. And if you haven't checked it out yet, get on it. I just think I want someone to tell me how to live my life, Father, because so far I think I've been getting it wrong. Fleabag was so good, I wish I could wipe it from my memory so I could go back and watch it again for the first time. <laughs> anyway, I also watched and loved many of our honorable mentions, so let's check those out and then we'll see what's at number one. Uh, do you want to go somewhere so we can talk? No, I don't really want to be alone with you. You understand that, right? I guess so. Senator, when I was coming up, as a lawyer, I didn't have to remind everyone I was a woman every 10 seconds because they never let me forget it. I smiled all through the casual grabbing of my behind and all the secret meetings on the golf course that I wasn't invited to. <laughs> Seventh grade is gonna be so amazing. It's gonna be really, really good. It's gonna be like the best year of our lives. Shuji, get off AOL! Shuji! Maya? might just be the single most dangerous creature in the universe. Who wants lemon bars? It's my Nana's recipe, and they are just sinful. Love them on my lips, but hate them on my hips, if you know what I mean. There's no way to recover the parts. You can trade. With Jawas, are you out of your mind? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Barry, season two. Hey, this is a really good stretch for you. Try to access some rage, you know? Okay. Or do you want me to start? Bill Hader had a fantastic year. He was the best part of It Chapter 2, aired the third season of his IFC comedy documentary Now, and brought viewers arguably the year's greatest season of TV with his tragic comedy Barry. Hader and his team of writers deftly manage a tricky balancing act between quirky comedy, vicious satire, and tragedy. And Hader gave an Emmy Award winning performance as the pained and wonderfully complex titular protagonist. Many critics and fans have compared it favorably to Breaking Bad, as it shares similar themes, tones, and plot devices. Give it a few more years, and we may be mentioning it alongside Breaking Bad in the pantheon of great TV. When did I meet Ken? I don't know. When... He's just a friend. You're drunk. What? You're drunk. If Ken's such a good friend, tell me when I met him. Tell me the day, tell me the time when I met Ken. Man, I started watching Barry when it first premiered, and I don't know why, but I kind of just forgot to keep up with it, and I feel like I'm missing out. Which show from 2019 would you rewatch until the end of time? Let us know in the comments, or come talk to me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton. Be sure to like and subscribe, and please watch this other video.